Well, hey guys, my name is Gray, and uh, it's a privilege to be with you uh, wherever you are and, and whoever you're watching this with as we continue our series, Extra ordinary. And man, I've loved this series because I love to, to dig into the scriptures and see the people that God uses and, and how he works in them and then how he works through them. And I think probably my favorite thing is, is that the people that he uses are imperfect or they're ordinary. And sometimes they got a lot of baggage and, and God still steps in and, and uses them in a mighty way. And so I find hope in that. And I hope you've been able to find hope in that as well. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about decisions. Now, I don't know if you've ever made any decisions that, that you might regret. I, I know I have. And, um, and I bet we could sit here all night and, or all day and, and swap stories about the decisions that we made that, that we regretted. And, and some of them would probably be funny. And then some of them probably, probably bring about a lot of pain and, and a lot of hurt and, and a lot of regret. And uh, we're going to look at a guy in the Old Testament. His name's Gideon, who, who was able to make four key decisions. And, and when we find Gideon, he's, he's not like this extraordinary, he doesn't have this extraordinary faith. In fact, when we find him, he's hiding, he's insecure, he's scared. And, and through these decisions, God moves him from this, this ordinary uh, individual who's scared and insecure to someone who gets to experience victory and, uh, in his life and, and gets to be used by God in a mighty way. So we're going to be in Judges chapter 6. The guy we're going to be talking about, his name's Gideon. And I'm just going to tell you Gideon's story. And then we're going to re rewind and pause and zoom in and look at these decisions. Basically, Gideon's story goes like this. We pick up in, in chapter 6 of Judges and it, it, the angel comes to him and he's hiding and he's, um, he's underground and he's threshing wheat in a wine press. And, and that's really not where you thresh wheat. And so that lets us, it gives us the first indicator that, that he's hiding. Uh, we we find, on, find out later that the, the Midianites, the people that are oppressing Israel at the time, uh, they come in and they destroy the crops. And so he's hiding from them, but you really don't want to thresh wheat like in a cave or underground. And, uh, but that's where we find him. And uh, through, through several conversations, God convinces him that, that he is the man to deliver, to be the judge, to deliver the Israelites from the hands of the Midianites. He goes and recruits this massive army. Ultimately, they go to battle and, and they come out victorious. And, and Gideon literally goes from, from hiding and insecure and fearful to, to this, this victorious general. But there's four key decisions that, that he makes. And those same decisions that, that we, we have to make, and, and to be honest, we have to make them daily in our life. So if we go to the end of the story, we'll find that the first key decision that Gideon makes is that Gideon was, was willing to do hard things. Let me read this to you. Chapter 7, uh, starting in verse 4. Actually, before I read it, let me tell you this, that Gideon started out with 32,000 soldiers. And God said, hey, if they're scared, I want you to send them home. Like, if you're scared, say you're scared. And they said they were scared. And so 22,000 went home. And then God says, hey, you still got too many. And so he, he tells them in, in chapter 7, verse 4, he said, there's still too many. Take them down to the water, and I will thin them out from there. Then what he begins to tell him, he's like, Gideon, the, the ones that get down on all fours and kind of put their head down, you don't need them uh, because they're not paying attention to the surroundings. Those folks will get you killed. You need the ones that bring the water to their mouth, and they keep their eyes up. And after that was all said and done, after that was all said and done, there's only 300 soldiers left. Many people would have walked out at that moment, but Gideon stayed the course. He was willing to do hard things. When it comes to our faith, man, we're, we're going to have to do hard things. You, you could say it this way, very rarely is, is the, the right thing and the wise thing and the God thing the same thing. We got to be willing to do hard things. The third decision, working backwards, that, that Gideon made is, is he was willing to deal with this stuff. In chapter 6, uh, in verse 25, God tells him, tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. And the reason I said stuff is because stuff represents one, the sin in his life. He says, man, Gideon, you got to deal with your sin. You got to get rid of that stuff. If you don't kill your sin, your sin will kill you. But then also I think about it, it being his father's idols and the things that are maybe in our past, like a, a wound from somebody, something that wasn't said or something that, that, that should have been said or something that was done to us or something that should have been done for us. And, 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 and so we, we got to be willing to deal with our past because anything left unresolved is going to to continue to make itself known in our present and then ultimately in our future. And if we don't deal 
with our past. It's going to derail our future. So we see Gideon go and he tears this stuff down. He deals with his past. He deals with his sin. We gotta be willing to deal with our stuff. The second decision that Gideon makes, and this one is huge, and is, is that he gave his life to a greater mission. In verse uh, 14 of chapter six, uh, the Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. He says, hey man, I, I want you to go. And, and Gideon was reluctant, but eventually stepped into the purpose and the plan that God has for him. Uh, we've got to be willing to get outside of ourselves. When we live in such a self-centered world, we got to willi be willing to get out of ourselves and to serve other people and to do for other people. This is why I love the mission and vision of venture. It's not only that we want to lead people to know, love, and follow Jesus, but our vision is that, is that we want to get beyond who's here ourselves, and we want to look to who's not here, and we want to be about going and, and getting them. And it's my hope that, that you look for ways to plug in, that, that your house church or, or whoever you're meeting with, man, that you jump in and, and you be a part of, of Camp Venture and going into the community and, and, and being a bridge for people to know, love, and follow Jesus. But this first decision that Gideon made is the one that sets the stage for all the rest. In, in, Gen, uh, in Judges chapter six, in verse 12, the angel said, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The decision that Gideon made is he allowed God to define him, not his circumstance, listen to this, not his circumstances, not that he was being oppressed by the Midianites, not his feelings, he felt scared and, empower, and, and, and without power but he allowed God to define him. I mean, that's such a key part of our life. And, and that begins with having a relationship with our heavenly father, putting our faith in Jesus. But then after that, we have to daily commit to, to allow God to define us. What we, another way we say this is that we have to daily commit to find our identity, to find our value, to allow God to say who we are. We have to daily commit to find that in Christ. Now, here's five areas that we tend to go to sometimes, even as Christians, uh, to find our identity. The first one is our pedigree. Like, like maybe, it, maybe it's your last name or where you're from. You're like, man, I, you know, this is where I get my value from. Or maybe it's, it's people, you know, what people think about you. Or maybe you've placed your spouse above your relationship with God. And, and so that's where you get your value from. And that's so dangerous because they're going to let you down. Uh, maybe it's your kids, you know, how they do in school or what they're doing on the sports field. That's where you, you know, that's what you allow to define you. Uh, there, there, there's our pedigree, people, our performance. Man, this is huge for men. You know, the, the, uh, how, we, how successful we are at work. And, and what I love to say about this, because I've had to say it to myself so many times, is, is we, if we get our identity from our performance, our successes go to our head, that's pride, and our failures go to our heart, and that's shame. And God hasn't designed us to live in either one of those. Our possessions, the stuff that we have, we can get our value from. The problem is, is it's always changing. There's always upgrades. It's never enough. And then our past, if we don't deal with our past, our past ultimately will become the thing that defines us. And so we could say this, if our decisions determine our destination in life, our identity informs our decisions. And then our decisions determine our destination. As we choose to place our identity in Christ, and get it, our value from him and allow him to tell us who we are. And let me just tell you who he says you are, your sons, your daughters, your saints, your ambassadors, your chosen, your heirs, your beloved, your friends, you're forgiven, you're redeemed, you're a new creation, you are justified and you are free. So listen to who God says you are and let that inform your decisions. Man, I hope you guys lean into this, spend some time talking about who God says you are and then allowing that truth to penetrate not just your head, but into your heart. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you that you love us. God, we thank you that you want to define us, that you pursue us and that we can find all that we need in you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>